Hi there, I'm Lauren Garrett, founder and queen bee of Native American Career Center at NativeAmericanCareerCenter.com. Today, I will demonstrate how to make this flower crown. So let's get started. I love the scent of clover blossoms. These clover blossoms were picked yesterday as of the filming of this video, so it's absolutely fine to pre-pick your clovers. There are about 60 clovers in this bunch that I have here, which should be enough for an average adult size crown. I like to make these for animals, to be honest, and I'll put some pictures here in the video <laughs> just because it's something I like to do. Here is the flower crown that I made for my cat just a few days ago. So you can see these blossoms are dried out, but again, this is smaller than the crown I will be making today. You can see from the pictures of the dog with the flower crowns that you don't have to just make them from clovers. You can absolutely work in different types of blossoms once you're used to the mechanics of how to make the flower crowns. Even so, for beginners, I suggest starting with clovers. I'm very happy to say that the only thing that you need in order to make the flower crowns are your hands and the blossoms. You want to make sure that they are on a fairly long stem. This one is a little bit longer than three inches. You can use shorter stems, like this one's got a shorter stem on it, but you want to use those kind of sparingly and work them into like the middle of the flower crown, but you really want the, the longest stems that you can get so that you have plenty of material to work with that will build on itself as the flower crown is constructed. So let's begin. So you can see this blossom we're gonna start with has a nice, thick stem and it's pliable. I can move it around, but it's also not too limp. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that flower and we're going to pick a second flower and line them up like so. And what I do is just lightly pinch where the two of them meet I take the second flower stem, loop it around, and then I take the end of the flower stem and pull it through. And it doesn't have to be super tight or perfect. You just want something to start. Now what I'm going to do to create stem stability before we start adding more flowers is take the first stem, so you can see, otherwise it's just kind of sliding around. You want to take that first stem, make sure your blossoms are stacked like so. I pinch where that first loop is and I take the first stem, wrap it around, make a loop, and I take the end of that first stem and I pull it through the loop. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly tight. It's just something to create some stability before we start adding more flowers. And what you can see is now 
when I pull on either flower stem, they're not sliding all over the place. So we're ready to add our third flower. So here we are. And I'm going to just pull it through those first two loops. And there it is. And they're starting to stack on each other. And I take that third stem, loop it around, and pull it through. And again, it doesn't have to be perfectly tight. And you can see that now we are starting to build our flower chain for our flower crown. And we've got our fourth flower stem, flower blossom, clover. And what I'm going to do is go through this kind of prominent loop and then the loop that I just tied with the third flower and pull it through. And then I will wrap the stem around, make a loop, take the end of the stem and pull. And since there are more stems present, that's starting to create more stability in what will eventually be the chain of flowers. But there's still enough room in that loop that I can easily pull through another blossom. And now I've got my fifth blossom. I'm going to take the end of the stem and instead of going through the two loops, I'm just going to start going through that last end loop. And I pull it through, make sure that the flowers are stacked nicely as so. And I'm going to loop it around, take the end, and pull it through the loop, and then pull. And you don't want to pull too tightly because you could then break off the end of the stem. And it doesn't mean that the whole flower crown is ruined. It just means that you can get creative and maybe go through one of those upper loops again. All right, and we've got our sixth and final blossom before we go into time lapse. So I am going to Pull the end through that last loop that we made with the fifth blossom. Pull it through. Make sure it's nice and stacked. And take the end of the stem, loop it around. Pull the end through that loop and pull. And what you see here is we've got a really nice, stable base for the rest of our flower crown, and we will go into time lapse. I've paused the time lapse just for a moment to show you that the flower crown is starting to spiral, or it's been spiraling a bit, which is absolutely fine. You'll be able to straighten it out once you are ready to close it off and create whatever size crown you want. I'm going to keep going, and you can also see that we've got about 12 inches or 30 centimeters so far. So that gives you a starting gauge for how big the flower crowns start to get. And now I will continue the time lapse.
And taking another quick break from the time lapse, this is about 35 to 38 blossoms and about how much I would use if I was going to make a flower crown to either go on the very top of an adult head or for a child. All right, so here we have about 48 to 50 blossoms that are all tied together. And I feel like this is approaching a length that is going to be really good for an average adult sized head. And we will now finish the flower crown. So you can see there's the stems on the end that we've been working on. And then there is the beginning. And in the beginning, we had tied these loops that are still pretty spacious. There's plenty of room to pull some extra stems through. And you can see throughout the middle of the crown, there's plenty of stems there that make the crown nice and stable. I'm pulling on it and it's not coming apart. And this is how we finish. So you wanna take your ending stems and it doesn't really matter which one you choose. You pull from one of them, and I like this one because it's kind of nice and thick. And you look for that first loop that you made. So here's that first loop. And pull that stem through the first loop. And then I'm also going to pull it through the second loop. Stability being the reason. And we pull the crown together. And then what you do is you take where that second loop is and your stem and you can loop that stem around like you would tie off the end and pull it through. And we still have all of these extra stems to work with as well as the remainder of the stem that we just pulled through and tied off. So I'm going to pick another one of the ending stems. I'm going to go with this one. And again, just pulling it into those first two loops and pulling it through. And this time I'm going to actually go through the third loop as well. I think there might actually be a fourth one too. And giving it a good tug. So you can see the end of our flower crown is getting nice and stable. And taking that, looping it around. And I'm gonna just push it in through that next loop. From the beginning of the flower crown or the, the beginning loops in the flower crown. And yeah, you can see now I'm, I'm tugging it. The flower crown is pretty stable. So we could stop here, but I'm going to do one more from the end pieces where I'm going to push it through the first and then the second loop. And it can get kind of tangly looking and that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I think, I think that's actually pretty good. So instead of wrapping it around and pulling it through, I'm actually just going to loop it through the loop that I just put it through and just make like a, like a half hitch knot there. And what we can do now, is take the remainder of the stems and then just work them into 
the rest of the crown here. All right, so I've finished pulling through those last few stems and there are still some that are kind of sticking out here. And what you could either do is just take your fingernails and pinch them off like so. And if you want something that's gonna make a cleaner cut, you could use something like nail clippers. And I recommend nail clippers because if you do wind up making a flower crown out of a larger flower that's got maybe a thicker or woodier stem, you're not going to ruin your clippers more than likely. Um, you would probably ruin a pair of scissors if you tried to use them on something that's too woody. There we are. There is our flower crown. Hmm. And that completes today's demonstration. I'm Lauren Garrett, founder and queen bee of Native American Career Center. You can always send me an email with any questions or comments at nativeamericancareercenter at gmail.com. Come see what the buzz is about at nativeamericancareercenter.com.